Father, thank you for a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you that we could rejoice in, in your presence. That we could that we could enjoy this this incredible Sabbath, Lord, this day of peace and, and rest. Father, we humbly invite you to come. Come and guide us, guide our thoughts. Teach us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Give me a moment. Give me a moment to share if it's at all possible. Come on, you can do this. All right, okay. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Now, just a short while back, a few years back, if, if I don't know if you recognize this uh, mother and her child, but a, a young mother, a young mother wants freedom for her for her little boy. He's five years old, if you remember his name. Ilya. God bless you, brother. The young mother wants, wants her little boy to grow up in freedom. She joins 14 other people and, and they, and at four in the morning, at four in the morning, when they believe that things are just right, they, they get on a 17 foot boat, not really seaworthy. And they set out for the promised land. They set out for freedom. Anyone in Cuba, okay, anyone in Cuba knows that if you if you find the right spot in Cuba and you and you put your raft out, the current will take you either to Miami or Fort Lauderdale around that area. So so these these people, 14, 14 of them, plus the little boy, they uh, they head out. For America. And we know the story. We know the story. There was uh, there was an incredible storm. I read that they were from 13 to 20 to even 30 foot high waves. I spoke to a young man uh, that I found, a young Cuban a teenager, that, that he came in one of these rafts. And he says that after his experience, he would never do that again. Because as the water seems calm from from the beach, from the shoreline, as you get into deeper water, it it, it becomes a monster. I read the story where they were they were bailing the water out of the boat with plastic bags that they had taken plastic bags to to cover their their uh, their needs their their food, their water, but it was useless. The boat sank. The young mother, the young mother, you know, mom is always thinking of her child. Mom is always protecting her child. The young mother takes the five-year-old and she ties him to an inner tube. The boat sinks and now we have 14 people in the water. The water is very cold. She holds on to the inner tube and her little boy as long as she can. And finally, the cold of the water overcomes her and she drowns along with the 14 adults. I believe it was two or three miles off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. Two men who were fishing find the little boy. They bring him on their boat. By law, you cannot bring him into the U.S., you must call the Coast Guard. The problem is that if you call the Coast Guard, they, they are going to return him to Cuba. Anyway, they call the Coast Guard, but they did not give up the, the little boy until the captain promised them that he would bring them to shore, to, to the U.S. It was obvious they were going to bring him in because the boy was was sunburned. The boy was cut. He was hurt. Ain't no telling how long he had gone without water or, or food. 
so they bring him in. The little boy makes a quick recovery. And as you know the story, they, the, the, they give him to family that lived in Miami. Yeah, to the uncle. Okay, the uncle. They love the boy. They want to take care of the boy. They want to take custody of the boy. Okay. By the way, the uncle is, is on the mother's side. The young lady who gave up her life for her child. Right. But now you have, uh, and, and I'm going to say this and remember, I am biased because I hate communism with all my heart. Yeah. But now you have a murderer, dictator, communist demanding that the U.S. return the boy. He sees this as a battle against the, uh, against the evil empire. He sees it as a battle against the United States of America. And he demands and he challenges morality and moral and, and more moral and immorality are, are his speeches. And he demands that by right, they should return the boy to his father who remained in Cuba. And this goes back and forth. And this goes back and forth. The United States Supreme Court is involved. The communist government sends the young communists. They send a, a they send they send a group of children. They are called young communists, they're called pioneros, uh, pioneers, and they come pure for political a purpose to impress the American people, and they demand that the little boy is sent back to Cuba. Now, I, I want us to remember the mother gave her life so that her little boy could be free, so that her little boy could, could enjoy freedom. And now, as, as we saw this morning, when men turn away from the law of God, there is darkness, there is confusion, and the American people are divided. And somewhere I read that the majority of the American people thought it was the right thing to send the boy back. Because I'm not sure that. <laughs> because they did not understand. Right. Remember the case is going Reno. back and forth. In the, the case is going back and forth in the court, from one court to another. There are lawyers now involved on both sides. But for a reason that I do not agree with, because I hate communism, Janet Reno sends in, sends in ICE or the immigration officials. And they come to the teeth. And they come into the house and they take and they take the little boy. I want us to remember the young mother gave her life so that her boy could live in freedom. Amen. So they come into the house armed, packing for bear, and they take the little boy from the uncle. They send him back to Cuba. Now, what we as, as American people did not understand is that it was not a battle between the right of the father to keep the boy. It was not a battle between uh, immigration and, and, and the status. It was a political ploy from a man who was pure evil to show that he could defeat the United States of America. Yeah. From the time that little boy was taken back to Cuba, he became a prop for a dictator. Amen. He took this little boy along every time he gave a speech. The little boy today, I don't know if he has a choice or not, but the little boy today is a grown man who claims to be communist and he hates he hates the empire, the evil empire. 
capitalists. If you notice in the picture, the little boy is dressed in red as the bodyguard is dressed in red. And today we're living, brothers and sisters, we're living in, in, in a time of confusion. And today we have forgotten that the love of the mother, she, she, she sacrificed her life so that her little boy could grow free. I, I, I don't know if, it, if this means anything to the American people anymore. I mean, we've seen that at the time of this virus, because of fear, people were willing to give up their rights. I've spoken to people who turn around and, and scream at me that millions will die unless we give up our rights. And, and by the way, listen, America has given up her, her babies, her children in the name of freedom throughout history. If you, if you go back to history and you see the Civil War, over 600,000 young American men gave their life for freedom. You know, you, you, have, you have World War I, you have World War II, where America has sacrificed her children, her babies, for freedom. But I want us to remember the young mother, because she loved her baby, gave up her life to make him free. I want us to read, I want us to read the word of God. Let's take a quick look at the word of God. Deuteron Deuter help me here. Deuteronomy 5, verse 15. Watch this now. This is incredible. Remember, Jesus says, that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord God, your God, brought you out of there through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath day. Amen? Amen. We always read Exodus uh, 20, and we almost never go to Deuteronomy 5. We keep the commandment, we keep the Sabbath, because it is a commandment, but we also keep the Sabbath because Jesus Christ, our dear Lord and Savior, gave his life to bring us out of slavery. As, as the mother gave her life to, to find freedom for, for that small child, her son, Jesus Christ gave his life so that his children could be free. And, and praise God. Praise yeah. God. Now watch this now, and, and I believe that we have gone back to the times of the judges. In those days, there was no king in Israel. In those days, there was no God in Israel. And every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Uh, if you would like to take make this experiment, go out and, and talk morality to different people in and, and, and your you know, in your day, as your day goes by and you meet people out in the street and go and, and speak to them about morality, ask them what they believe is right. And you're going to find that very few go to Jesus Christ. Because, because we, and when I say we, I'm talking about mankind, because we have turned away from the king. We have turned away from Jesus. We do what is right in our own eyes. You know, someone might say there is Bible truth and there is regular truth. There's Bible truth and there's everyday truth. And, and that's the way that's the way people think today. The truth is the word of God. Truth is Jesus Christ. And everything and anything apart from the word of God 
only leads to suffering and tears. And it, it is a deception. Again, to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, if they do not speak according to the word of God, according to the law of God, they are com in complete darkness. Because there is no God, men will do according to what they think is best. The Bible must be, the word of God must be our standard. If we depart from the word of God, we're headed into trouble. I, I, every time I can tell you this right now, every time that I have fixed, that I have tried to fix things on my own, it doesn't work out. It only goes from bad to worse. We must, we must look at the Bible. We must look at the word of God. We must look at Jesus. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. This is incredible. Amazing. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. But will have the light of life. We must hold on to Jesus. We must look at Amen. Jesus. For if God did not spare angels, watch this now. But if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but he cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. I, I don't know if we understand because I've, I've heard people say, oh, Jesus went to hell and, and, he, and he preached in hell. We all know that the devil's in charge of hell and, and his angels, you know, they, they help him govern hell. But, but this is Hollywood. These are fables. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, that he cast them into hell and committed them to darkness, he condemned them into not understanding, is what the, the scripture is saying until the judgment those who those who turn away from truth do not understand like the angels that have fallen like the angels that sin like like the demons that follow satan they do not understand they live in darkness we must look at jesus christ we must, uh, it, it, after we went home after the service, we, we had something to eat. And then, and then we watched, uh, who is the pastor? Loma Cain. We were watching Loma Cain. And, and it was funny how he was saying. It, it, it was funny how he was saying. Your Bible if someone takes your Bible and looks at your Bible, he was saying, are the pages worn out from you turning them? Are the pages bent and scarred from you turning the pages of your Bible? It's, it's amazing. We must, we must turn the pages of our Bible. Amen. We must put in our heart the word of God because hard times are coming and we have something more sure watch this we're living in darkness amen amen we're living in a time of darkness we're living in a time when men want to do right men want to fix things not a, not, not according to God but according to their own designs And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you, you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. The, the, the prophecy, the word of God, it is a lamp, it is a torch that we must, that we must look at 
that we must use. Amen. Because we live in a dark world. Now watch this. This is incredible. Psalm 119, verse 34. Here the psalmist, he's calling out to the Lord God. He says, give me understanding. Why? What do you want understanding for? It could be the question. What do you mean give you understanding? Whatever for? Give me understanding so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Oh, please, make this note. Write it down. Keep it in your pocket. Keep it in your Bible so you can turn to it. You can see this prayer. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom. Why? What for? So that I can keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Now watch this now. Watch this. Get ready. Get ready. Okay. There are two kinds of people in this world. There are those who love Jesus Christ and keep his commandments. There are those who will not keep his commandments. Your commands are always with me. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. Praise God. We have his word. We have his promise. That if we keep his commandments, we will not be deceived. If we are a people who, who keep his commandments, we live by the faith of Jesus. And in the last days, we will know exactly what to do. You know, many of us today are wondering, uh, do I move to the country? Do I sell? Do I not sell? How do I know when? We have the answer here. Your commandments are always with me. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. <coughs> the promise for the last days, excuse me. <coughs> the promise for the last days. Jesus says that in the heart of his people, he will write his law. The promise for the last days. Jesus says that his people will love his law. Now, how does it say it in, in, in Revelation 14? There is a people who follow the lamb wherever he goes, wherever. These are not contaminated by false churches. No. Because they keep the commandments of God. They are wiser than their enemies. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Revelation 18, 4, I look forward to this so much. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of the darkness. Come out of that, that false church where they worship in vain because they keep the commandments of men before the commandments of God. They come out of that place where the pastor, the minister teaches lies. Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. Oh, please share with those around you, your family, your friends, it's time to tell them to come out of the lie. I, I believe that we don't have to be afraid to share our truth. Because as we share truth, the truth will impress the heart. And this is how I was brought to, to the Seventh-day Adventist church. Okay, no one tried to baby me into the church. No one tried to befriend me into the church. Someone came to my home and spoke truth to me and allowed the Holy Spirit to work and pull me out of darkness and, and out of sin and out of the lie and come to the truth. I believe we must be honest with those around us and give them truth. 
Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want us to look at Jesus always. I am saying this because of me, myself. I want us to look at Jesus, to fill our heart with Jesus Christ. And, and we are surrounded by sin. We're surrounded by sinners. We're surrounded by people, by people who do not love Christ. And there will be temptation and there will be hard times. But we must look at the word of God. And we must trust Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I need two warriors. I need two warriors. You know, you know that, that warriors have no fear. Amen. Amen. They trust in their general. They trust in their king. I need, I need a warrior to praise God and thank him for the Sabbath. And I need the warrior to ask for the blessings of a week coming that will bring to us incredible things and incredible blessings. A week that will bring to us the opportunity to share the light, to share life. Who's first? I'll pray. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. It was such a beautiful day. And thank you for the beautiful music, the uh, singers, our preacher. Uh, the word was just great. And we thank you for, for allowing us to listen to your word and worship. Dear Lord, um, please be with us and, and, and guide us um, to continue to follow your word as we should. And dear Lord, um, may we continue to be able to um, have wonderful days wonderful sabbaths like this to come until you return dear lord bless us all in the name of jesus i pray yes amen amen, amen. Come on now, don't keep Jesus waiting. Kind Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the week that we have ahead of us. I want to thank you for the opportunities that it will present. Bless us, Lord, as we go into this week and help us to be a witness for you at all times. Again, thank you for all the things that you do for us every day. And we lift up all those people we've been praying for, watch over each and every one of them. And uh, we uh, also lift up our pastors, watch over each and every one of them, uh, be with the uh, pastor here to Benita Springs, Juan, Juan and his sons, Wes and Juan Jr. And the people there at Shelby also Watch over them all, Lord, mm. and bless this week as we wade into it and do the things that you would want us to do. Have us operate, as the pastor would say, with no fear. Amen. And uh, do the things that you would call upon each and every one of us to witness for. Thank you, Lord. And be with each one that's here and with all their family members and the ones that we we uh, don't have with us this evening, too. Amen. Our church members, watch them overall and give them the strength to do the things that you want them to do. Yes. Yes, just in your name. Amen. 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 Amen.
God bless you guys. Eu tô assim. Feliz semana. Feliz semana. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you guys. Happy week. Happy week. Happy week. Good night. Good night.